Hello folks, Kyle here, Dark 30 Outdoors. Welcome back, thanks so much for watching. Hey, if you like outdoors content, fishing, camping, kayaking, hunting, that sort of thing, be sure and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. So with that said, today's video is going to be deer scouting tips. We're gonna cover the basics, so let's get into it. That feels good. This is, this is bananas, okay? Yay! Yay! I got her, I got her, I got her. Okay, when we talk about deer scouting tips, breaking it down into the most basic thing. A lot of this is probably going to be more for beginners, but I hope that seasoned hunters can, can, can get value out of this as well. I tell you what, I've been doing this for 26 years and I'm always learning. I'm always, always learning. The more that we scout, the better we are as deer hunters. In fact, you should probably spend as much or more time scouting than you do actually hunting. That's, that's tip number one. Huh. One of your primary goals when you are out deer scouting is to try to determine a deer's point A to point B. And for, for most of us, we're gonna to wanna to determine where they're bedding and where they're feeding. Most, most typically, in the mornings, those deer are gonna be moving from their feed sources to their bedding sources. And then in the late afternoon, early evenings, they're gonna be moving vice versa, from their bedding areas to their, to their food sources. If you can determine their point A to their point B, then you can identify an, an ambush point, a point along that path where you can intercept them and you can put yourself in position to harvest that animal. And with that being said, one of the keys to that is to be able to slip into that spot undetected. So you might identify a really great spot and it's a three mile hike into the woods. And, and you've disturbed a, a whole big block of, of woods and, and, and generated a bunch of sweat and, and who knows what else. You've created a heck of a disturbance trying to get to that spot, to this perfect spot. It's three miles deep in the woods. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that you shouldn't hunt those spots. I'm just letting you know if we're scouting and we're trying to identify a spot that we can slip in undetected walking three miles through the woods sometimes uphill it might not be ideal the next thing that we want to think about when we are scouting is our own human scent now there are markets <laughs> now there are products on the market that do help us minimize our human scent. I don't say eliminate human scent because I've learned that it is simply impossible. If we can minimize our, our human scent, if we can especially eliminate ground scent or minimize that to a tremendous amount, it goes a long way to helping us as hunters. Prevailing wind direction is one of the big keys. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't harvest or kill a deer that, that, that may approach you from downwind. It's a lot harder, it's a lot more challenging, it's a lot less likely, it can be done. Notice I said deer. When we're talking about a big mature buck that's been around the block for a few years, a four and a half, five and a half year old buck, <laughs> the odds of him coming in straight downwind in your scent stream are slim and none. <laughs> Maybe during the rut, a wayward doe pulls him in I, I don't know but it's it's extremely uncommon that's not putting the, the odds in your favor another thing that we'll talk about uh, another thing that I'll try to point out in, in regard to human scent is thermals especially in hill country you you need to understand how thermals can can move your scent cone uh, up a ridge or, or down a ridge depending on when you're hunting it and, and how you're hunting it Okay, so I've rambled on about a, a, a few different points that we want to think about when we're deer scouting. And this is the basics. What I'm going to do is bring you a couple of examples here on my laptop. Just show you on the screen. This, this is a great starting point. This is something that 
you or anyone can do at home with their resources. If you got a computer, if you don't go to the library, they got computers there. This is a great starting point. You can identify places that you then want to hike into and explore because you know right off the bat there are advantages built into these spots before you even hit the ground. So with that let's get into example number one and that is a lake that has public land uh, available adjacent to it. It can be your best friend and here's why. Okay folks I know this is a little bit tricky to see, but uh, I pulled up this uh, map of a lake. And in the center of the screen, you can see a little dot. That is, a, I have marked that as a spot that I would be interested in hunting. This map is um, set accordingly so that um, straight up is north, straight down is south. As, as we would expect. In most places prevailing winds, and when I say prevailing winds, that means the, the most common winds that you're going to uh, in, encounter day in and day out, they're gonna come from the southwest or west. So as you can see, I have this little dot and potential stand set up right here at the, the very point of a cove. And if prevailing winds are west-southwest, they're going to blow any scent cone that I may produce out over this lake. And if we really want to get super stealth, we get our boat or our canoe or our kayak and we paddle in from the lake. We beach our craft and within about 20 yards, we're up in our tree. That, my friends, is super stealth. You have not disturbed the area at all, and you are in a, in a pinch point. That's a pinch point. Any deer, I'm gonna use my finger rather than my, um, rather than my cursor. Any deer that, God, I'm washing that out. Any deer that would want to go from here, this block of woods, over to here, this block of woods, and vice versa, they're gonna pass by that point. You're in a pinch point. You are in a perfect place to intercept them. They do not have the opportunity to get downwind of you and pick up your scent. So that, I can even um, switch this over to satellite real quick, just so you can see what it looks like. It's actually a little bit better picture. There is some woods down here, okay? Down here, there is some woods and some thickets. So that could be potential doe bedding areas, you know? And then there's some up here as well. There's definitely some thickets, right? So this makes this spot that I have identified as, as a very obvious one where um, deer would want to uh, pass by. That is definitely a pinch point as deer are coming from from around here and from here on around. Okay. Now, for example number two, this is, um, this is in regard to topo maps. And I just pulled up something really, really random and, and oversimplified, but it, it will outline my point, okay? When you're, when you're looking at a topo map, you should be able to identify things like ridge tops, right? Like here's a ridge top, and then here's a ridge top, right? So this little dip in between these two ridge tops is what we, uh, we, we commonly refer, refer to as a sow, right? And um, at least on this side, it has, it, it doesn't have a super steep slope, so that is, that is a place where deer will will feel comfortable enough to travel up into this saddle and then maybe side hill off off this point and then come down this gradual slope here right so if we know winds are, are prevailing southwest west southwest we probably i don't know if you can pick up my cursor we probably want to be right here 
you know, and, and, and we're hoping that, you know, these deer are going to cut through right here. And uh, again, my finger's washing it out, but if you can see where the cursor is, you're in per perfect position to intercept that deer and it's not going to catch your scent. So again, these are two examples of how you can identify potential spots from home with topo maps or even just regular maps and satellite maps. Um, use these tools. They're a great starting point. And um, I'm going to give you one. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to give you one more tip. Okay, my last deer scouting tip covering the basics is a tool that I never go into the woods when I'm scouting. I never go into the woods when I'm scouting without this tool. And that is my saw. This is a um, handsaw by Wickard Ridge. I think I went through seven or eight Gerbers before I upgraded to the Wicked Ridge. I think this was $30, $35 on uh, Amazon. If I can get a link into the description, I'll be sure to do that. But um, Gerber or whatever handsaw you've got, take this with you, take this with you. When you identify an awesome stand site, you can clear two or three shooting lanes really, really quickly if you've got this with you. Another thing that I'll do if I'm scouting for uh, possible climber tree stand options, then I might take the blade and, and actually um, mark the bark on the tree so that I know and don't get me wrong, I'm not scarring the tree dramatically. I'm, I'm putting about a two or three inch mark, something that I can simply see and identify when I come back to that spot. Okay, yeah, this was the tree. Because trust me, when it's you know five in the morning and you're fumbling around the woods trying to remember which tree it was, you, you really want to be able to get identify that tree quickly. So yeah, your your hands off. When you go out deer scouting, don't, don't forget that. Definitely take your, uh, your hands off. Those are my deer scouting tips uh, covering the basics. And once again, I thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day.